What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Morfetto, and today I want to dissect Mina Ashido's character in the My Hero Academia franchise. This character is fan freaking tastic, to say the least. She is probably the most unique character in Class 1A, and I, I'm currently on this path of dissecting each class member of class 1a one at a time and i figured since i already did yuga aoyama seat number one in class 1a why not just go on to seat number two with mina ashido mina ashido like i've said before is one of the most unique looking characters in this class she's got a very cool quirk in the fact that she can create acid uh, i think it just comes out of her skin uh, most of the time it seems to come out of her hands. Maybe it just comes out of her hands. Um, it's pretty cool. I think her debut in the series, she hasn't really done a whole lot uh, of, a, of like a singles thing. She hasn't beaten a villain in particularly by herself. But she has been a great support character for other heroes in her class and whatnot and she has been slowly getting better and better at what she does in combat um maybe we'll start by talking about what she has done in the anime so far i've also read all the way ahead in the manga so i know that she's got much more development coming up um let me think when i first saw her i definitely thought wow she looks very unique. She's got those weird horn things. I heard that the horns were supposed to be a little bit more elaborate in her original design, but it was just too complicated to draw that over and over again, so they simplified the horns. They're not really anything she uses combatively in combat, um, but the acid is really her main offensive weapon, weapon, and she's also used it defensively. Uh, I would say the first time we got to see her in true one-on-one -on -one combat would be the sports festival when she actually uh made it to the finals i think she was a part of bakugo's team during the uh the section where they had to have people on their shoulders i cannot remember the name of it the cavalry battle that's it yes she was part of that squad and that was pretty cool. I think she even mentioned that Bakugo only really wanted her on the team because her acid could possibly counter uh, Shoto's uh, ice. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what she said. She uh, then gets to go on to the finals, the tournament bracket, the 16 top students in the sports festival. One of the best arcs in the entire series, in my opinion. Uh, and many others. Uh, she goes and actually wins her first round. I think she's the only female character. No, no. Her and Vines both win the first their first round. Uh, so two. But she's the only female character from Class 1A to win the first round and move on to the final eight. And she, in the first round, beats Yuga Aoyama. It seems that she's somewhat paired with Yuga in multiple occasions. Like, she gets paired with him earlier in the series when they do, like, the team-up test thing where two kids play villains and two kids play heroes and they have to stop them from... They have to touch the bomb uh, in the top of the building. Yeah, but they got teamed up there. And then here she goes one-on-one -on -one with Yuga, who just... His game plan was to fire a laser over and over again uh, from his naval uh, laser gun thingy. And she decides to go head first. That's the thing about Mina that's really interesting. Her fighting style is... Uh, fight first, ask questions later, or think later. She goes straight into battle. She thinks on her feet, which in a lot of ways is unique because some characters like Momo failed in the first round of the sports festival tournament bracket um, against Tsukuyomi when she overthought it. She couldn't think on her feet and she got knocked out of the ring before she knew it. But Mina went head first. She used her acid that came out of her feet, uh, yes, and, and she's got these boots so she can slide across her acid and move very quickly, and then she used her acid, which she can control the acidity and make it uh, strong enough to melt metal, I would say, because it melted Yuga's belt that helps him shoot his naval laser, and then gave him a uppercut 
a very cool animated uppercut that she is known for. She's done it at least two times in the series. And uh, that was pretty dope that she got to move on. I think that she's got a unique fighting style. Later on in the series, she develops, or she at least shows the class that she's super into break dancing. And that kind of gets incorporated into her fighting style. And I think that's pretty cool. She's a very outgoing character. I feel like she was probably the first girl to get all the other girls in Class 1A together and to all become a clique, uh, you know, off off screen, off book. They see, She seems like the one that would bring that energy, that friendship. She's got so much happiness that oozes out of her, just like her, her just like her acid. Uh, I think she's pretty dope. I think she deserves uh, her own arc, her own story, kind of like how Ida, uh, after the sports festival, got his own story about his brother and Stain. I think it'd be cool to see Mina get something uh, that's hers. I know she has a little bit of a, a prequel um, type flashback moment during Kirishima's development arc where you find out that she went to school with Kirishima, which is pretty cool. And they've kind of been hinting at the fact that her, Mina, and Kirishima might end up in a relationship at some point. They seem to be very fond of each other, and it doesn't just feel like a best friends type of thing. You can tell that they they are smitten with each other. But, I mean, there's other people that you could see her ending up with. I, I would be interested if they decided to make her into chicks. They kind of teased that in the uh, Heroes Rising um, movie a little bit when she was answering phones. And uh, Maybe. That would be interesting. I could see her character being that way or a bisexual type character. Who knows? Uh, that's her choice. But I think that if anything, she will probably end up with Kirishima if... Uh, the show decides to show us what happens to these kids after they graduate and move on and become pros. After the sports festival, she really didn't get to do a whole lot. She got to team up with Danky in the finals exams uh, before the summer break, before the summer camp. She teamed up with Danky to take on the principal in their last exam. She actually failed, not failed, but she got one of the worst scores in the paper part, the uh, paper, uh, the test part. And her and Danky were actually the last two. I think she was like 19 and he was 20 in test scores. And then they got paired up, I assume on purpose, to take on the smartest pro at the school, the principal, who basically beats them uh, without any effort whatsoever. He cuts off all their paths of escape, even gives them one, and they still failed. But, I mean, it's not too fair, since he's kind of the smartest one, but he's not Physically threatening, I guess you could say, but he's probably 10 steps ahead of them uh, at any point. They really didn't show them having any other plans other than just running away from the principal, which is like, why would you want to hit your principal, I guess? But they failed that, and then they had to do extra uh, classes when they went to the summer camp to all train their quirks. And I believe she was trying to... She was either trying to increase the acidity of her acid or increase the amount of acid she can create, I believe. And that's kind of what all the students were doing, depending on their quirk, uh, making their quirks just a little stronger. I think that her dancing combat ability is pretty good for physical hand-to-hand -hand combat. I feel like a lot of the students don't spend enough time working on their hand-to-hand -hand combat without their quirks, you know, and then you can take that hand-to-hand -hand combat and then combine it with your quirks. She's got the dancing ability. She could make, she can be a dancing type fighter with the quirk acid and uh, it would be pretty dope. She could have an acid punch, acid kick. I know later in the series she makes acid shields, which is pretty dope. She makes acid armor, uh, kind of a tribute to Kirishima's armor and uh, Tsukuyomi's armor. 
uh, which is pretty cool later on. And I, I think that's really cool for her character that she's able to manipulate the acid so well. Uh, later on, she also figures out a way to fire it from her hands, like uh, almost like a uh, a water, like a hose of acid. Imagine, even if it's at very low acidity, just imagine getting soap in your eyes or lemon juice in your eyes. She could do that to an opponent and then kick them in the in the face or give them the the Mina Ashido uppercut she's known for. A lot of potential here with Mina. She really didn't get to contribute when the villains decided to attack the summer camp because she was already in a classroom and they kind of just kept her there the entire time, um, which is fine, I guess. Um, she didn't get to do a whole lot there. Uh, later on, when they were saving Bakugo, she didn't in get incorporated into that. Then, well, let's talk about the movie. She didn't get to do anything in Two Heroes. I don't even think she was there. I don't think she even went on the trip. Sadly, she didn't do that. And then in Heroes Rising, the the more recent movie, she got to be um, in a comp... Her and Tsukuyomi teamed up against Slice, I think her name was, the girl with the pin missile hair and the blade hair. And that was pretty cool, seeing her back up uh, Dark Shadow, in a way, with her acid abilities. And then even igniting Dark Shadow to go full rage mode when she got hit in the thigh by some of the pin missiles coming from Slice's hair. So she got to have a little bit of a shine there. I, I feel like it would have been cool to see her actually go head-to-head -head with Slice and using her acid. I think she burned some of her hair, which was pretty cool. Um... Really, the most recent thing she's done in Season 5 was when she teamed up with Deku, Ravity, and Mineta and took on four members of Class 1B plus uh, Shinzo. So it was a five-on-four battle. They did have Deku, who's pretty OP, <clears throat> but they definitely felt like they were not the strongest team, I guess you would say. They didn't really have someone to help them look for their opponents. They kind of just had to go with whatever Deku said. And Deku decided to be the bait for Shinzo and uh, Monoma. I think Shinzo and Monoma basically take on Deku and Aravity. While Mina and Mineta go on and take on three members of Class 1B. Three members that I didn't bother learning their names. Um, <laughs> but they, they're, they're pretty good working together. These three have worked together. You can tell. And, you know, Mina and Mineta aren't necessarily the best of friends. Because Mineta's kind of a weirdo. Not really a weirdo. He's a little too... He's just he's just the worst sometimes. And you can understand why, why the, the girls wouldn't really want to hang out with Mineta. Or develop ultimate tag team moves. But somehow, Mina and Mineta together kick these kids' asses. I think eventually Aravity comes and helps and backs them up, but they Mineta and Mina hold their own during this uh, this mock battle between the classes, and that was pretty dope. I mean, Deku was so busy with his battle with Shinzo and Monoma, he really didn't have time to back them up, and I think it was pretty cool that they were able to team up together and find a way to win. She even did her classic uppercut to um, the dude with the twin impact, the double impact uh, quirk, who was actually pretty strong. He had the cool, like, Dragon Ball Z scouter on his face and whatnot. I thought, you know, from looks alone, he kind of looks like a, a dweeb type of character, but he was actually pretty... Um, pretty formidable but she was able to make that shit happen and in the manga during the training arc she and in the anime i guess right now she's in the middle she's training with uh i think a former top 10 hero um which is pretty cool and then when they decide to come back together spoilers Spoiler alert, she's able to create the armor I was talking about. She can create acid armor to protect herself from many different attacks, which is pretty cool. It's really cool that she's able to use her abilities offensively, defensively. Uh, later on in the war arc, she, become, she has a big moment where she's trying to get this, um, this sleeping agent, this 
this uh, sleeping pill, basically, into Giganta Max, whatever, the giant monster man uh, mouth, but she kind of has a little bit of PTSD when she realizes that it's the same guy that basically scared her socks off back in uh, in high school or middle school, whatever it was. I think it was her middle school years when she stood up to him when he was kind of messing, not messing with, but asking for directions from her some of her classmates. So she kind of had a little bit of PTSD there, but Kirishima came in and made the save, which is cool, um, but it also felt like it could have been her moment to get that thing in the, in, uh, what's his name, Gigantamax, what, Giant, Giantos mouth, and um, I'll get that name down when he's more involved in the anime, and I actually hear it a few times. But uh, she could have had that moment because she was used, I believe she used her acid to deflect Dobby's fire, uh, which is pretty dope. And it was, a, it's a great defensive tool. It's a great offensive tool. She's got a lot of potential. Mina ashido has got a lot of potential. I was thinking about this the other day. If Mina had a one-on-one -on -one fight with Momo, considerably the top, female student in class 1A uh, academically and at this point she's even gotten better at thinking on her feet who would win who would win this battle I mean I would say Momo has the advantage in a lot of ways but I feel like Mina like I said earlier thinks on her feet during battle while Momo has to have a little bit of prep time at least especially earlier in the series she won't, needed much more prep time and even with a little bit of time before her fight with uh, Sukiyomi, she couldn't even win that battle. She was so in her head, and I could see her getting in her head, and before she knows it, Mina's there with the Mina uppercut. Mina's there throwing acid, acid rain, acid shields to deflect anything that Momo could come up with. Momo has the advantage in knowing what Mina's capable of, but Mina, in a way, not being as academically smart, book smart, she's street smart in a way. And she could probably come up with a strategy uh, sort of just going head first at Momo before she has time to create anything that could stop her. She's so quick on her feet with the her sliding ability with the acid and uh, her ability to create acid armor now, it would, that Momo would really need some time to think what to create to beat her. I think that Momo has the advantage, would probably win six times out of 10, and Mina would probably only win four times out of 10, but I think they're in a way on the same level of ability physically. I, I truly believe a character like Mina could become a top 10 pro in the series if she when she graduates and becomes a pro hero she's got the ability she's got the look uh she's got the personality and a lot of being the top 10 hero is the personality and the uniqueness of the character not necessarily being the strongest hero she could easily go become a pro be be like um Mount Lady's sidekick for half a year and then start her own agency. Maybe her and Kirishima start an agency together. That'd be dope. Definitely a cool idea going forward. Also, I've been thinking one of the kids from Class 1A, in my opinion, should die in the series at some point uh, to help. Do, I don't know. I think it's, it's unrealistic that one of these kids won't uh, make the ultimate sacrifice to save Deku or save Bakugo or save one of the girls, one of the boys. I don't think it'll be Mina. I would be shocked if Mina Ashido bit the bullet uh, during this, this the run of My Hero Academia before they graduate. But I think one of the kids is going to go down uh, at some point and save Deku, save Bakugo, save Shoto. Uh, I don't think it'll be Mina because she's so cool and so unique and such a, a, a character that they could build upon if they decided to have a sequel series where all the kids are pros now. Who wouldn't want to see what she becomes? Uh, she can definitely, I think she'd sell a lot of cool toys if they decided to really push her character. And I think the, the creator of the series really likes her a lot. Uh, why would she? She's always popping in and here and there. It feels like he wants to push her somewhere. He just doesn't know where yet. So I don't think she's going to die. But I could see Kirishima 
dying, saving her, or saving Bakugo, or whoever. Kirishima is a self-sacrificing character. He's the guy that jumps in as the ultimate defense. He'll jump in the way and think that his armor might be able to deflect, and maybe it will to a point, and then a villain blows him up, or... Um, what to, uh, what, they find a way to kill Kirishima. I could see Kirishima being the kid that makes the ultimate sacrifice that pushes a character like Bakugo to his limits to beat the final villain or something like that. I could definitely see that happening down the line. And I think other people could too, and it would suck because Kirishima's a badass, but I don't see them killing Mina because she's got a lot of potential to be one of the top female pros going forward. But... Kirishima has that self-sacrifice, manly gimmick going on that it would fit his character. And since she's sort of smitten on him, it would be like, whoa, that threw a wrench in our plans. If these two were supposed to end up in a relationship. And I thought, who else could Mina be with? And the only other person in the class that I think that Mina would probably end up with if they decide to have these characters end up in relationships, I'd don't really care either way, but her and Bakugo could end up together because of their kind of, they both had a deep friendship with Kirishima. If Kirishima dies sacrificing himself, I could see that bringing Mina and Bakugo closer together. Wouldn't that be insane if those two ended up together? I, don't, I haven't really heard anybody talk about that. And I think they would fit each other, their personality. She's not willing to be uh, talked down to by Bakugo. She would have, she's got the personality that she can bite back at him, like the way he does to other characters. Plus, you know, he's smarter than he looks. He's getting better at that, of course. I think that, that the death of Kirishima could bring these two characters together. And I think that would be such a really, a really cool way to bring two characters into a relationship. Uh, both having a, a fondness for another one that passed away. That would have been, that'd be really interesting. Uh, and it would definitely change, throw a wrench in anybody's thinking that Kirishima is going to end up with Mina. And uh, it would be really cool and almost too natural that her ending up with Bakugo happens. Yeah. What do you guys think? What do you guys think in the comments? Please let me know. What do you think of Mina Ashido? Do you think that she could be a top 10 pro going forward when they finally let these kids graduate? Um, do you think that she'll end up as a sidekick? I have a big feeling that a lot of these kids like Tailman, Sugar Man, Invisible Girl, uh, Mineta, I don't think these four in particular are ever going to become a pro hero as a, they will become pros, maybe sidekicks, sidekick pros, you know what I mean? They're not necessarily going to have their own agency. They're not going to be a top 10 hero. I can't imagine it unless they get some major character development going forward. They're kind of stuck as backup sidekick. They help people get away from emergencies type thing. They're support heroes at best. But Mina, Mina Ashido has the potential to be in that top 10. I don't know if she'd make it to number one, but top 10 for sure. She's got the personality. She's got the look. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Like this video. Let me know what you thought of this dissection of Mina Ashido. Um, I will move on to the next kid in the class of my next video. I'm Mr. Morfetto, and I will talk to you later.